guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on our YouTube account and we're gonna be looking through a tier list. Now this is my personal tier list. This is of course up to bias, up to discrimination, up to whatever it may be guys, but there are some heroes within AFK Arena and this is going to be a longer video to really go through the tier list. The logic behind them, I might switch a couple heroes when we're going through, but I went through and kind of built them out um, as kind of the key heroes. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at it right now. All right guys, so here we go. We're gonna run through this tier maker tier list that I created. Now again, guys, a lot of heroes in here, they are subject to um, to change to, to kind of the priority. And I'm gonna show you why I kind of ranked them where they were. There were a few that I, I kind of played around with um, a little bit to see exactly where they would. Some might be a little bit higher, but again, overall looking at the tier list. So let's go ahead and we'll run through this thing. So looking at the priority guys, number one is Ainz. Now the reason why I put Ainz first is of course because guys, he does an incredible amount of damage. Earlier game, mid game, once you garrison him, he will do well. But looking through a lot of different game modes, he is still utilized. Also when you look at going through the Peaks of Time adventures, things of that nature, he can absolutely dominate them without a doubt, guys, making him one of the big priorities. Even when I went through and I got all of my class-specific artifacts, it was just literally the Ainz comp that I ran through there worked incredibly well. There are so many places in AFK Arena that he is still being utilized, which of course is followed by Lucretia. Lucretia is the one solo woman army. Guys, you can put her in there with four other level ones. She can still finish the stages. As you get further in the campaign, she is utilized through the entire game. We also see her in a bunch of different game modes, including um, the Cursed Realm she is in, um, as well as the, the Temporal Rift she's in. There's a lot of places, guys. They are two priority heroes to build out, which of course are followed by Scarlet and Grez. Now Scarlet, since she has been introduced, is probably one of the most damage dealing heroes that we've seen. Utilized in guild bosses, Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm. We also see her in campaign formations. The respective tower, these heroes are the best of the best, guys. They are the ones you are going to use for a ton of utility within AFK Arena, which is the exact same for Grez. Grez makes his appearance in campaign formations. We see him in Cursed Realm, Twisted Realm, Abyssal Expedition, Hunting Fields. Um, he is a hero that really doesn't do... Um, th there isn't really another hero that does what he does meaning that he is very unique in the way that he brings up minions, the damage he deals, very, very big requirement there. Now, the regular version of Taylene. Now this again is a little up to kind of debate, but we still see a lot of utilization with her and I am actually surprised. Um, I use her in a couple different formations. Again, utilizing within the Curse Realm, I use her within the Temple Rift for quite a few comps. Um, I, I might even just lower her down a little bit of the priority. Again, this is kind of a work in progress, but there are quite a few places that she is actually being utilized um, within AFK Arena, which is the reason why I put her a little bit higher. But of course, this is going to be subject to change, something that we're gonna update and kind of work with as we have a lot more players and get a lot more input from you guys. Now the twins. The twins are a big priority. When it comes to first opening up the Stargazer, guys, you want a copy of the twins. It is the number one priority when that Stargazer opens. If you don't have a copy of the twins, it is time to get a single copy of the twins um, because there, again, isn't a hero that does really what they do with the haste buff from the ultimate ability and also the linking. They are very unique in what they do. Now, looking at all the guys, after Lucretia, after the twins, then Lucretia, then Alna. Alna is a big priority because of the immunity that she provides with informations. Um, she can actually dominate a lot of different places. We see her in PvP formations. We see her in campaign formations. There is a lot of utility behind building out Alna, which brings us to Rowan. Rowan is a hero, guys, that is a buffer, energy, battery, and also a support hero. Plus 30 signature item on him, absolutely, guys. The energy regeneration that he gets with his potion is game-changing. Um, if you get him early early on in AFK Arena, he works incredibly well. Even utilizing him now into Chapter 44, he has run in the Charmazard. He has run, actually, in a couple different formations. We also see, again, his utility in multiple game modes, which brings us to Mahira. 
Now Mahira, of course, it has the Mesmerize effect. Don't really have to have her built up, but the Charmizard is built around her. Um, even at lower levels, she will do incredibly well. That is the reason why she's not super, super high on the priority list, but she is a priority to build, guys. After you're building out um, Lucretia, Alna, the twins, probably a copy of Mortis in there. Then it would be Mahira and Kazard would be really the, the next focuses to really pick up out of there, which do make a very big difference. Now looking next, guys, we have the, the, the Bearded Geniuses. Um, Mertlin, of course, one of the strongest support heroes with the damage mitigation, also the ability to cheat death, works incredibly well within formations. Um, we've seen him run majority of the time. He is frontline within formations backed up by Albedo or backed up by his almost twin, Leonardo. It's funny that they're very, very similar. Now, Leonardo, one hero that provides a incredible amount of damage and crowd control and also does a 45% damage buff when he has that 9 of 9 furniture. Again, a really big priority to have in the campaign. We've seen him run hand in hand with Raku. We've seen him in a diff couple different formations um, that again, works incredibly well within the campaign. We've seen him in different game modes, providing crowd control, the damage amplification, even seen him in the Eins formation where again, he works very well, which brings us to Raku, the rascal. Um, he does an insane amount of damage, guys. Still meta comp running into chapter 44. Earlier game, he provides crowd control, and the crowd control gives him a damage amplification, which is kind of silly. And he also has the ability to eat, I believe it is, oranges to buff himself with haste. Um, normal attacks do a lot more damage than his ultimate ability, which we know was kind of broken once upon a time with Isabella. Um, but his regular attacks will just crush the damage beaters, which brings us to Halos. So Halos is one hero, guys, that is very unique, similar to the twins. Um, with his energy regeneration, his shielding aspect, it is unique and very important to have him built. Out of the last couple of heroes that have been released, he is probably the highest priority that we've seen. Again, utilized in the hunt, um, the, in the grand hunt, the Abyssal Expedition, used within the Curse Realm, used within the Twist Realm. There are so many places where Halos is showing up, guys. If you do not have him, again, it's very hard to put another hero in his place just because he is pretty unique in what he does. Now, Oden is a hero that scales with build, meaning that when you get signature item, when you build up the nine of nine furniture, when you do engrave him, he is just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Even though he is a energy, um, he just absolutely crushes the enemy's energy meters. Um, he has a dislocation. He does a ton of damage in addition to everything else that he does carry for the Graveborns and for formations. Then we bring up Thorin, guys. Thorin Cheese is still alive and well ever since the retaliation ability really took hold. Um, when a signature item was released, Thorin has been a priority for an incredible, incredible amount of time, which is the reason why we build him. Now, earlier game, um, he does well even early and mid game, just for the simple fact, guys, he is a tank that you have to kill more than once. Um, I cheesed all the way through, I believe, 30 chapters utilizing him with, of course, Damon, which did work incredibly well. Um, and, and there's a point, guys, Thorin will be one of your five formations, one of the meta formation comps that you got. Then we do have Mishka. Mishka is another one, guys, since she has been released, has worked incredibly well. Um, the better that you build out, the stronger you build out. She has shielding, she has healing, she has a lot of crowd control. Um, also, the survivability is there for her, making her a big priority to build early. Now, I know there's a lot of heroes within the priority, guys, and AFK Arena has a ton of heroes right now, which is the reason why this next section, I put all of the Awakened heroes um, together, except the Awakened version of Aziz. Now, here it is kind of um, biggest priority, honestly, for me, would say getting one single copy of the Awakened version of Solus does make a game-changing difference in a lot of different aspects of AFK Arena. And then I would go with Brutus. Again, looking at the utility, looking at different formations, the Curse Realm, things of that nature, Brutus seems to have the overall strong, strong utility, um, especially being able to carry in the Mauler Tower. Now, all of them have their own perspective strengths, 
meaning that Brutus is awesome in the Mauler Tower. Awakened Thane absolutely runs the Lightbearer Tower. Same with the Celestial Tower with Awakened Taylin and Solus within the Wilder Tower will carry all of them, guys. They all carry their own respective towers um, and do absolutely incredibly well. Now, looking further down, um, we have Audrey. Now, Audrey, of course, Celestial Tower does an insane amount of damage, but PvP, she is being built as well. We also do see her again in some Cursed Realm comps, which is the reason within formations, she does pretty well. Um, again, the tier list is kind of difficult to go through because there's so many places and so many different chapters of AFK Arena, which brings us to Zafriel. Now, Zafriel, of course, provides a lot of crowd control and does damage, guys. Now, he is probably one of the best stunners within the game. Um, if somebody hits him, they actually get stunned, which again, building him out makes a big difference. Also, his Storm Cloud can stun. He has a lot of the crowd control aspect. PvP, he does incredibly well, but again, carries within Celestial Tower, things of that nature. Absolutely a big, big priority there. Now, looking at Frampton. So, Frampton is another one, guys, um, within the um, Hypogen Tower, works incredibly well. He does require a very, very high investment, but we've seen him in some of the comps within Chapter 43. We've seen him in 40, uh, 44. We've also seen him within some Cursed Realm comps. He is not as prevalent as he used to be. It seems like he's kind of losing his footing within the formation, but he does work incredibly well, which brings us to Tresnar. Now, Tresnar is a hero that I feel a lot of players overlook. Um, he does have to have that plus 30 engraving is really good. Plus 60 mitigates all, all frontal damage, which is kind of crazy. Um, again, we see him as a absolute PvP destroyer. He's run within the Temporal Rift. We see him in there. Um, also, a lot of different formations within AFK Arena, Greyborn Tower. Absolutely, guys, a big driver factor in there, which brings us to Damon. Now, Damon is a hero that we carry through all of AFK Arena. We see him early game, mid game, late game. Um, he is in formations. He is in a lot of different aspects of AFK Arena, which is just like most of these guys. That is the reason it's a little bit um, different with the tier list is we see a lot of these heroes within a lot of different game modes. And that's really what I'm trying to focus on, I guess, with the list right now. Um, Soros is another one. We've seen Soros most recently within the Temple Rift but he is still run in a couple different formations. Um, Curse Realm, he can be in there as well. We do see him quite a bit. Um, if you don't have heroes like Anasta built, because he was a boss killer and he was, honestly, he was what Scarlet is now. Um, when Soros came out, he was an absolute boss killer. He was the one you wanted to build, which was the highest priority. But again, when it comes to towers, he does exceptionally well. Brings us to Anasta. Now, Anasta, very unique. Anasta and Brutus go together very well. Um, she has some mitigation, but she does an incredible amount of damage, bringing her own buffs, which does work incredibly well with formations and, of course, the Mauler Tower. Now, Iran, the, the reason he's in here, guys, is the five pull is still very prevalent. Now, the five pull, of course, goes hand in hand with Scrath. Um, Scrath has to have that three of nine furniture to make the five pull work. But traditionally, it was a five pull that we had Sophia in. Um, she had been dropped out. Now Queen actually fills that slot within the formation. Works incredibly well. A lot of times we don't see him run with Leica anymore. That used to be the combination. But when you're running like the Thorn Cheese, the five pull works. When you're running a Lucretia Eron comp, the five pull works. There are so many aspects of the five pull that work incredibly well, guys. Um, which is the reason why for formations, he is still a primary hero within AFK Arena. Now, Sonya, um, she is kind of a buffer support. She did get a pretty big nerf, but she works incredibly well within a lot of different formations because she has a big mitigation factor, which is the reason why a lot of players use her. Um, she is a tank. She is very defensive. Um, a lot of times players will even run her back row with the Ascended version of Thane or the Awakened version of Thane um, because of the roses that she'll give out. We can also see her with um, Orin, which is actually a lower priority hero. But again, with her defensive structure, she can work pretty well within the formation. Um, 
And again, we see her quite a bit. Same with Kren. Now, a lot of players were asking even on the stream earlier, um, how, how well does Kren work? Um, Kren works incredibly well, still does a lot of damage. Cursed Realm, he is prevalent in a lot of formations. Similar to what we see with Raku, he is in a lot of different formations, which is the reason why so many players still do build and utilize Kren. Um, Mauler Tower, absolutely a requirement. So looking at Kazard, Kazard is a hero, guys. You have to get to Mythic. Um, his extension for the buff duration is a game changer. When it comes to Leonardo, when it comes to the Charmazard, when it comes to formations, even if he still, even if he dies, um, you do get the buff duration in there, which means the buff, um, the buffs or the mesmerize effect or the crowd control effects are going to be extended significantly, which is the reason again why a lot of players build Kazard. Now Zorath does need three of nine furniture, but the more that you build out Zorath, the stronger he is within Charmazard formations, within a couple different formations. He is usually the top damage dealer within those formations. We still see him prevalent within PvP and a couple aspects of AFK Arena. Now, Athalia is one of the original, I think she is the original Celestial hero that we got. Still seeing her, again, in a lot of formations, utilized within the towers. Um, PvP, she is very prevalent within several formations. Temporal Rift, I'm even running her right now in the Temporal Rift still works incredibly well within a lot of campaign modes. Now Warwick, the only reason Warwick is in here guys is he has a bone breaker ability, um, gives a big defense reduction, which is the reason why players build him and run him. Um, don't really have to build him out too high, but you have to have his survivability there because he is still one of the best debuffers within AFK Arena. Which brings us to Pharrell. Pharrell is one of, I believe, was the one of the first Greyborns that was released, but he still does phenomenal energy disintegration, crowd control, um, his spirits up with the horrify effect. He is one of the heroes you are going to utilize through all of K AFK Arena. Um, is still utilized again in a lot of different comps, including the PvP formations, which brings us to Ezio. Now, Ezio, um, PvP, he does well. We see him again in a lot of different formations. Um, one of the heroes that I, I really took for granted when he came out works incredibly well with the Awakened version of Brutus and Anasa just because he's the finisher, guys. When you have players that are heroes that can get a lot of the enemies low, Ezio will finish them off and he finishes them off almost flawlessly. Now, Albedo in here is the buffer for the entire dimensional heroes, the, the whole entire kit, guys. Albedo will buff them all with attack and defense when you build her up. Works exceptionally well within formations, which is the reason why Ainz and Albedo go together really well. But Ainz has actually taken a little bit of a lower priority for campaign stages, but the rest of it still works incredibly well. But she has buffed up a lot of Joan of Arc, which we see quite a bit, um, as well as Leonardo again with the, the builds and the formations that we see in here. Now Silas, Silas is of course not only a really strong he healer, um, he provides immunity and he provides an attack buff to heroes, which is super strong. If you build out the engraving, you actually do get a good damage reduction from him as well, which brings us of course to a star, a star with the damage reduction, very strong damage reduction factor with the star. Is it worth it to engrave her all the way to 60? Um, for the damage reduction, it is pretty minimal, but for the damage factor she brings is the reason why players are building her out. Um, we even seen her right now in the Grand Hunt. She was the highest damage dealer within there. She does a ton of damage and she has solid mitigation, which makes her a good priority for formations. Then of course, Skarath with that three of nine furniture um, works incredibly, incredibly well within there. So as we continue down here, guys, um, you can see we have kind of so many heroes in AFK Arena. Um, buff and support heroes, a lot of them are utilized within, I'm not going to run through all of them, um, but a lot of them are utilized in different aspects of AFK Arena. Even Joan most recently, again, the, the Twisted Realm, um, the Cursed Realm, things of that nature does incredibly well. Estrilda, another one, a good buffer and a support hero. Same that we see with like a Rosaline, a good buffer, good support hero. Um, these are the heroes that kind of make up that second tier of heroes 
that are the game changing support for our formation heroes up here. Um, Scrag, of course, works incredibly well with Frampton. Even when you're building out heroes like Orthos, Orthos works well with Athelia. Um, the, the team combinations that go, even looking here, we have Queen that works well with the five pole with Eron and with Scarath. So going through these guys, again, there's a lot of these heroes in this class that have kind of a buff support role. We see it with Hodgkin. Um, we see it with Desiro. We see it with Rain, with Aziz, with, with a lot of the heroes. They really can carry and support a lot of the other teams, including Arthur, um, utilized within the dimensional teams. We have Pippa that is used sometimes with the Thor and Cheese. Um, Mortis is a buffer kind of support hero for, again, a lot of different formations. I know we have a few damage dealers in here, but again, they are really the the kind of the support element to a, a regular team. We see Kayleen even running with all Negres sometimes. Um, we also see Taylene. A lot of these are utilized within the towers themselves. And the same down here with kind of our niche formation. Um, most of these heroes are heroes that used to be, once upon a time, um, kind of priority heroes. Even looking here, guys, short of the first five light bearers, um, short of the light bearers tower, they really don't see any play. Same here, um, short of the towers, we don't see much play. Even here, looking at Iran, looking at Cirrus, the towers are where it's at, guys. The awakened version of Aziz, I actually put down here. He provides crowd control off the bat. There's no reason to really build him, but again, he doesn't really have a place within AFK Arena. Um, Mizoth could be if you built him out. I have never built him out. Um, Zekas, the same. It, it seems like they're just filling a similar role, what we have from a lot of other heroes. Now, Torn and um, Morio, they went together for a couple combinations within the Cursed Realm, and you had to have both of them built. But Morio has now kind of taken a back seat. Um, I don't even see her being run within the Celestial Towers anymore. Since the Awakened version of Solus came out, um, she has lost her place in Dark Nemora, and now she is losing her footing, if not is, is already gone within the Cursed Realm itself, or it's going to be gone very soon. Nara, Theowin, again, in the tower, they work okay, but overall, not much utility. Same with Respin, Ullard, um, Leofric. Most of them don't have a very strong hold within AFK Arena. Um, even having Granite at a plus 30, it does give you a, um, a, an effect that freezes everybody. It actually petrifies everybody. But again, a lot of players do not have him built. Just looked over, passed over as a hero. Baba Yaga, a little bit too slow on the cast. Bane is a hero that, again, some players do use. Um, occasionally, Greyborn Tower, Oku, Alero. Again, their respective towers worked well, as well as Flora. Short of the tower, I don't really see anywhere that she's used. Possibly PvP, again, for just kind of a, a stall team. And then we do have this whole entire section of heroes that... I don't even know the last time I've used them. I know this regular version of Thane, if you haven't built, he is utilized in the Light Bear Tower, but it does require a 309 60 investment, so being fully maxed out. Um, but again, short of that, they're not used anywhere. Thisu, again, the tower can be used. Baden in the tower, Yukio doesn't even exist. Most of the other heroes either fill a slot in a tower comp just because it's the hero that you have but building them out is going to yield you almost no benefit that of course i saved the very bottom for our boy walker um the the texas ranger um warrior whatever he became um i i still love the walker tier on the bottom guys um but overall look at the amount of heroes that we have in afk arena doesn't include Geralt and yennefer as of yet we still have a lot more testing to do in there but there are just so many heroes in here to, to build, to really focus on, to, it, it's incredible, especially having five awakened heroes already, the Celestials, the Hypogens, the Dimensionals. Guys, we have so much in the AFK arena. It is absolutely crazy to build out these heroes. But again, the, the big priorities up here, guys, are, are really the focusing on the meta tiers. I went through some meta tier videos a little while ago. Um, I kind of want to do a similar thing like this for the factions. 
kind of breaking them down or even going through and breaking down um, the PVP teams. Again, just because it is super, super subjective, tier lists are a little bit more difficult to do because essentially you could say, you know, a hero like Damon should be up in the priority section. Okay, you, you could definitely say that. You could say that about a little a bunch of different heroes. Again, really depending on where you are, who you have built. Um, but these are pretty much the key heroes that we see within formations, the key heroes that we see within um, meta comps, and also a lot of utility. And this kind of the second row is what I did for the formations. Um, we see a lot of these heroes within filling in slots within the meta comp used within a different kind of to complement or complete formations. Um, we do see them quite a bit of time. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. This is going to be kind of a work in progress. We can change this up. I'm gonna save this. Um, that way we can kind of adjust where some of these heroes need to go. Um, but a lot of them are very prevalent when it comes to some of the towers. Again, there, there's a lot of heroes that you have to build within AFK Arena just because the game has grown to the point that it is so intensive and hero dependent, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But all right guys, again, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.